Interview the plug. We're gonna see what's going on with the plug. Oh yeah, we can do that, bro. <laughs> we can definitely do that. What's, what's, what's going on, plug? How your day? Happy shit, New Year, man! It's been an amazing New Year, man. 2019, we about to fuck some shit up, bro. What you mean we are gonna fuck some shit up? You already fucking shit up, man. I seen that new piece. Oh, you yeah. fucking the game up. Come on, let's I don't know if back. you you a jeweler. Nah, nah that big bro. motherfucker. Nah, I'm a, I'm a I'm a flower distributor. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. A licensed flower distributor. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, I just want to stop and thank Plug for uh reaching out, pulling me in this bitch. For you sure, me? man. Shout out to Desto, bro. A lot of people don't be rec rec recognizing people on, on different levels. It's like most people want somebody that's always at the top, but the person at the top wasn't there at be all the time. So, you know, you reach down and you see my growth and you're like, I want to fuck with you, been fucking with me. So I appreciate you, Plug, for that. Yeah, bro. You got your own wave, man. You got your, you got a brand, bro. You doing it. Mm-hmm. Man, 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 dog. So let's get back into this weed shit, bro. How much weed do you smoke on a daily basis? Bro? Okay, so look, look, look. This, this is it's two different daily basis. You feel me? Me being who I am, I hang, all of my friends are really high profile artists. So yeah. you know, most of the time, if it's me myself, yeah. I'm about an ounce or two a day. About an ounce okay. or two a day. You know, I roll three to four gram backwoods. You know, some people more so will roll like three blunts, smoke it through the day. No, just knock me out with that big one. You feel me? And I'm going to smoke that motherfucker till it's done. But on occasions, you know, it, I might be in the studio with me goes. You know, that, you know, we doing like probably a QP in like four hours. Yeah, motherfuckers are smoking big. You know, if it's just me and Pump, oh, we doing like a QP a day. Yeah. Just rolling them. You feel me? To get to a point, and then, but it don't even be about how much weed you smoke, because like I could have a pound and not smoke it if it's not good weed. Okay, what well, what what you fuck with? You fuck with OG or you fuck with flavors? I fuck with flavors, man. Okay, so you on that you on that next level too? Yeah, you know I love when you kiss that bitch. It's like God damn, was this bitch just kissing a fucking Jolly Rancher? Was this bitch just kissing a fucking Gushers? You know I love the flavor. Yeah, different flavors. You got to keep a lot of fucking. Hey, bro, when was the first time you smoked weed, bro? When was the first time you got introduced to Mary Jane? I ain't gonna lie. I, I was like, I, I really couldn't smoke at first. That shit used to get me paranoid. That like, shit used to get me paranoid as fuck because I used to go to jail a lot. So when I used to smoke, nigga, I'd be getting paranoid. But about when I was like, I ain't gonna lie, first time I smoked, I was in 10th, I was 10 years old. Not 10th grade, I was 10 years old. I was in 10 years old. We was at the homie house. That nigga his mom used to always send him to the stove to light her joints and to light her cigarettes. I go and light this for me. It is, she used to even send him to the store to get, I mean, to the corner to the candy label to get him like little dime bags and cigarettes and shit. <laughs> she so, was a runner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His mom <laughs> used to send him everywhere. Like in the hood, most niggas' mom would be big as fuck. So the mom's just sit in the house or go to work. And when they off work, you got to send your ass, go down there and get some bread. Yeah. Go down there and give me a pack of cigarettes. Yeah. Here, take this note with you. So I was like 10 years old. I was at the homie shit. My cousin was with me. My cousin, we had a little joint and we ran to go and light it for his mama and we hit it. <laughs> but like, I don't think I hit it right. Like I just like, <sighs> I didn't even inhale it. I just sucked it in and blew it out. Man, and I must have knocked the fuck out still. Backward. I must have knocked out for the whole day. My mom was like, boy, you must have been tired playing with your cousins all day. And then I was straight after that. Then I probably started smoking again. Probably when I was like, after high school. I didn't smoke in high school. For real? I, yeah, I didn't smoke. I was about money. I was For real? about money. I didn't smoke. You was turned up. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was what? I was really just like, all through high school, bro. Like, I didn't drink. I didn't smoke. I didn't do, like, I didn't do shit. I sold it, though. Yeah. But I was like, on some real, like. Like hustling shit, like you know, like you Jay Z gotta, mentality. Yeah, yeah, hove up, yeah, hove yeah, up, yeah, hove. yeah. I just I sold everything: Niggas, phones, cars, dime sacks, Damn. weed, nigga, candy, chips, and juice. What you gotta understand? High school, bro. You in high school for four years. You know all these people. You know exactly what they like. You know, and depending on the school you is, these kids got some bread. You feel me? I'm from Watts, but yeah. I went to Crenshaw. Okay, so. It's some. It was a group of people up there that was better than middle class or middle class. And to me, middle class used to be rich. So if you're able to get fucking lunch money every day and you're able to get new shoes every other month, 
you middle class. I mean, you rich. I, mean, I had three pairs of shoes all year. Birthday, Christmas, and back to school. You got to wear them motherfuckers all, every day until. So I used to what? I used to go to Crenshaw. Y'all want chips? What? They stopped selling chips? I'm going to sell chips. They yeah. stopped selling sodas? I'm going to sell sodas. Yeah. You found the void. That's what you did. Yeah. yeah. Well, y'all, oh, y'all want Come the on. new iPhone? Hold on, I know a nigga that just took one of them bitches. So I'm about to buy it from his ass as yeah. soon as he take it. Yeah. And I'm going to come over here because I know your mama because she picked you up. And I'm going to tell your mama, look, I know he want a new cell phone. I got one for yeah. you. Don't tell him you got it for me. Yeah. You give me like 300 You know that bitch like eight in the stores. Yeah. You, you hit him me? down with the math. What, real quick. Nigga, it got to a point where it's not the best thing, but I was buying so many phones yeah, that I was actually was just selling the them motherfuckers. Yeah, man. You come to me with some bread, and then I'll get my bread from the chips and juices and the candies. So I was like, I'll make all this money. I, I was selling so many chips and juice and candy in high school that I have kids work for me. Yeah. Like you, pull, you pull up on me in the morning, you want to make like 10 bucks, take this $50 bag of candy, sell that, come back to me, I'll give you 10. Word. You Shit was crazy. Hustles, man. Damn. Yeah. Bro needs a wood. Damn, bro. Fuck. How'd you get introduced to the music shit? Like, how'd you get catch um, a wave with that, man? Well, selling everything and going to Crenshaw. Uh, a lot of my friends was rappers, ones of which was this group called Overdose. It was like four dudes. Um, they were I, all three of them was my homies, and they blew up off the shit. I done seen them sign like a million dollar deal out from just hanging out with me and hanging out with us in L.A. So then at that point, I still wasn't like I want to be a rapper. I, was like, I just wanna, I just wanna help them get to where they want to go. I wanna help my homies. So you know, with me having all of the connections, cause I'm the hustler and I'm like really a person of person talk that shit. Talk I talk that to shit. everybody I know everything bro like I'm like I really I'm a people person because you never know like somebody could look at somebody whatever I look at somebody I'm like okay he like it's cuz buyers and sellers I want to know both so if you buying what are you buying if you selling what are you selling yeah. and it's that in everybody so when they started blowing up you what what y'all want okay I'm gonna get it and I can get it faster cuz I know everybody especially in LA so then after them, you know, they started doing me, and I'm like, fuck. Like, I'll literally see them in the studio, ride around me all day, make my plays, and go to the studio and make a song about it. Yeah. And I'm like, I used to think that was tight. Like, they just made a song. He talking about my car. Yeah. He talking about the he talking about the uh, place that I went. Or yeah. shit, I was with him when he, you know what he was talking about? They was in the Jack. It was my Jack. We was sliding. <laughs> I used to think that was tight. And I'm like, what yeah. the fuck? That could be me saying the same shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And a lot of people look at something and be like, Oh, you have to be born to do that, or they, they mom and dad was this. That's why they're able. No, nah, bro, you can learn anything. Well, well, people don't realize you was on your grind. You was doing shows, this working every day, networking, studios, boom, yeah. weed events, all that shit, everything. man. Like people gotta know that. You know what I'm saying, bro? Put a lot of work in day to day to day to day to day. Yeah, look, well, this is the thing. Whenever you out and you doing all this traffic, selling everything, you start selling to a certain level of people. And to be around them certain level of people, you have to be there. So like you said, weed events, studios, parties, pop up um, pop-up shop. You have to be yeah. there. And the more you're there, the more Backstage you know these people, shit. you yeah. have to. And the more yeah. places you are, the bigger places, the bigger the purchase, the bigger everything is like goes around the big old circle. You feel me? Yeah. So you got to be on your, if you don't give a fuck, whatever you want to do, you got to be in them places. And then LA is just the perfect place to be there. You know what I mean? If you really on your shit, if you just put a little push into it, that ball gonna roll on its own. You put a lot of push into it, like a full court all day. My I'm on my grind from when I wake up. I'm selling sweaters. So listen to them. Listen to them like, right now. Like if I wake up in the morning, as soon as I wake up, I'm like, okay, let me tweet some shit about my clothes, and then let me see who out here today. Let me just get on your grind. Just get on it, it's gonna keep rolling. If you got a clothing line, wake up every day and try to get your shit to people. You yes. know, you sell one, take that profit and give one away. Yes. You feel me? And you do that, they, you're gonna sell two. Give two away. Now you got four people and everybody that watched them, four people gonna wanna buy it, turn into eight. And guess what? They're all walking billboards because they got they got the cough syrup on. You know what I mean? <laughs> they wearing it. Yeah. They wearing it. It's gonna keep circulating and circulating. You gotta really just, you gotta be on that shit. You be on that, well, I don't know, in LA. In LA, you gotta be on that shit. That's why I feel like a lot of people come here as well too. You know, like if you own it out here, you really gonna get something out of it. Like you're really gonna get something out. Yeah, of we it. we we the advanced wave right now. We we the next wave. Yeah, yeah. Out here, yeah. You got a clothing line, man. I 
like right now, well, we just you you just did an interview with somebody. Boom, you get him a sweater. Boom, now he's wearing it. Now yeah. whoever see him is gonna want one. Now you got all these people talking. I don't know the people. Don't, people don't know how to grind. Like I yeah. grind, I still grind. And then you gotta keep that same mind state from when you first started. You can't get there and be like, oh, I'm too good to drive to this yeah. person and sell him one sweater, or oh, I'm too good to go to this studio because they don't have uh big ass speakers or it's not in Hollywood. No, yeah. nigga, you didn't start that way. All right, well let's let's run this back eighteen months ago. Eighteen months ago, uh, had you ever been outside the country? Oh no, what the fuck? Well, I've barely been out of fucking. LA. Okay, let's say let's say twelve months. So let's say the last twelve months. Nope. Oh, okay. The last six months. The last six months. I probably went out the first time. How many I times went. you been overseas? Within the last twelve months. Twelve months. Twelve months. I've been around the world three times. Okay, you hear this. Okay. Three times. I've been, been around I've been the Germany, world. Germany, France, fucking Paris. I've been to Germany, Paris. I done been to fucking Netherlands. I done been to Croatia. I done Russia. been to Russia. Yeah. I done been to Canada. I done been to Vancouver. I done been to fucking, bro, I done been everywhere. I, well, everywhere in Europe and over that way. Um, we plan on going to China. Okay. What's been the craziest weed experience outside the country? Amsterdam. It's like it's crazy, bro. It's next level. It's it's not no, no, it's not it's I've not never it's been. different. I've never been. It's different. It's, it's different. not next okay. level. Okay. It's not next level. We are far more advanced than weed culture in okay. everything. But over there, it's like you got a whole city. That's made up, not a whole city, because it's really the when Amsterdam is way bigger than just weed. When you think of Amsterdam, you think of weed. No, that's like the first place where they're doing like international trade. They got like it's crazy. Hella shit going Hella on. Hella shit going on. But what's most people known for is the weed. Yeah. You feel me? So you go into cafes, you can order a gram of weed. But the thing is, since the demand there is so high, people go there, the price markup is crazy. So yes, uh, it's I'm legal. Go, I'm about to go out there and fuck shit up. You already know. Bro, I'm it's wide open you, for Cali plug. I'm telling you, <laughs> bro, you go over there. So like, okay, you get some regular weed. What, remember, we used to have lavender. They have yeah. lavender Kush over there. People are so tripping out that you can walk and buy it. They don't give a fuck what they it's buy. Tourist money, bro. Yeah, so you can sell lavender Kush, ten dollars a gram. Yeah. So that's whatever, ten dollars a gram lavender Kush. Boom, you go up to some shit like, let's say you just got some Kush, just Kush. Yeah. You can do, do twenty a gram. No. Let's say you go up to some shit like um, a gelato. You can do 40 a gram. Are you listening to me? Yeah. 40 you, gram 40 gelato. A gram. People want flavors. I know I'm You I'm go to Sherb Yeah. 50 a gram. Yeah. They're buying it. Because when you're, you go in there, you don't want to smoke the little shit. You want, okay, 50 a gram. Let me get three grams. Yeah, you want you want the whole three thing. grand. You got a selling at H for well, one fifty. I I push I push half ounces on the people. I'm like, yo, here's the half ounce. I'll try to stay away from the 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 apes and the, the the tuna cans a little bad. Yeah, you know, I'll try to push the half. But ounce out there, bit. you get they're getting so much traffic. You're selling a thousand three grams for one fifty. Yeah, that's on the little shit. That's and then, all and then, the little and then you, shit. Then when you're looking at it, that's the storefront. So what are they buying it for? You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're not trying to sell the grams for 50. You're trying to sell to the nigga that's selling the grams for 50. Bro, I buy, in Paris, I'm, I pay $800 for an ounce. Okay. What happened in the police car overseas? Dog? Oh, my God. I need to ask you directly. I never asked somebody else. I'm not in your business. I just I just so see look, this So shit. look, this, bro, this is basically this all that happened, bro. Okay, we over there. We chilling. And we have some weed. We have some weed. Bro, I, I smoke weed. Everybody know I smoke weed. Everybody know we smoke weed. Niggas left some weed in the back. They flew us. They put us out. They started tripping. And then after that, they found the weed. How they, much weed? Half ounce? Ooh. Okay. Say over a quarter pound. About a QP. QP, okay. So the police found a QP. What country are you in? Denmark. Denmark. What are the weed laws in Denmark? <sighs> <coughs> They're pretty lenient. Pretty million. They let us out. Cool. Who caught the? Who took the case? You were pumped. We both had weed. Oh, damn. <laughs> smoking too much. Smoking damn. too much. So basically, whatever. But that was cool. They just gave us a fine. Sent our ass on our way. It wasn't tripping that hard. Okay. But it was just. I was it a just made, yeah, yeah, no, no. You you think like, whoa, what the fuck? These niggas. 
they cause they make it so serious cause like they don't smoke weed. Even though, even though in Denmark they have a place where you can smoke weed legally. Yeah. They just took a- it so serious. Area. Yeah, yeah, they do. Every all these countries, bro, they got spots where it's like it's damn near like, you the can red smoke. light district, red light or whatever, di- the like weed you, district, yeah. whatever. You can go there and they're not tripping. So it's like if they wasn't tripping, I think to actually make it a case, it would have to be over a hundred grams. See what the fuck going on. Yeah, you see, I got, I just bumped up the Instagram dog during yeah. the interview. You see yeah. what the fuck going on? Hold on Plug. <laughs> don't play with them. <laughs> yeah, but look, we got this splash. You know what the fuck going on, bro? It's the craziest shit being in custody overseas because you don't know what the fuck they saying. That's what I was worried about. I was, I'm like, like sitting right there. I'm like, hey, can I get some water? They, I'm like, what you just say. At least over here, when you're in custody, you hear what the fuck they talking about. You don't know what these cops are saying. But like I said, 100 grams, we would have been in. Um, Really in jail. They got, gave us the finest sentence on that one. Okay. Take, so that, we're take that little cheddar. Yeah, the yeah. label I, the label will send you that money. Bro, it's <laughs> so crazy because you like. The label did. Something that's so legal right here. Like, yeah. look, look, I, bro, I could be, I could walk past, a po- I can walk past police breaking down weed. Yeah, that's regular. Bro, over there, bro, you smell like weed. They damn near trying to kick you off the plane. Damn, that's crazy. But that's just, you, you know, it comes with it. You know, you want to go overseas and make this money, you got to buy by their rules. Yeah, and we got to push this culture. You know yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so it's, but they got like that ganja cologne. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got a weed. It's a, a weed house that I, I fuck with over there in Amsterdam called The Greenhouse, bro. Y'all know about The Greenhouse. <laughs> yeah. Shit's in all the documentaries Yeah, and shit, my boy. My boy, no, yeah, that's my shit, Joe. That's my shit. Greenhouse is fire. They got fire-ass food. Yeah. Blow it down, smoke it up, but... There's a lot of weed spots out there. Okay, but. now, if you could tell people, like, the shows overseas you guys were doing weren't little clubs or theaters. What? We're talking, little. like, hold on, hold on. We're talking, like, what, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000? What kind of crowds have you rocked, bro? What kind of crowds? Um, tell these man, I, I do them big, man. We did some shit called the Leeds Festival. That shit was, like, 50,000. Man, we did EDC, man. That shit was, Damn. like, I don't even know how many people was there. Um... First of all, we just did a whole tour run. So anywhere from on, on the festival level, anywhere from twelve thousand to like seventy thousand. And then on our show runs, our shows cap be like five to like ten thousand. That's 10. every night. Every yeah. night. Yeah. Every night. Every night. It's crazy, man. We just did um the bar clay. Yeah. In the New bar York, clay yeah, in New York post city. Malone. That was yeah. the first time doing like a fucking Coliseum and shit was the crazy. Shit is it? It's like a whole like you have to know, like you, I don't know. It's an echo. It's an echo effect. You know, like it's a gang of people out there, bro. Yeah. You can't even see them all. How many people yeah. would be? Shit, crazy. Damn, bro. I think we're doing Coachella. I think they announced we're doing Coachella, Coachella this year. Y'all gonna damn. see me at Coachella? Fuck, man. You got you y'all fucking shit up right now. Yeah. Went right for the big leagues. <laughs> you skipped. You said. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I've been. I've been. I toured more in Europe than I toured in America. That's crazy. Can you believe that? Yeah. What the women like overseas, man? Oh, they're crazy, man. These bitches is crazy. But no, it's fire, though. <laughs> but overseas women are fire because you don't know what they're saying. <laughs> so, like, the whole time, it's like you're really, like, having a conversation yeah. with somebody without using words. Yeah. You know? You like, you want something to drink? Yeah. You thirsty? You yeah. Hungry? Yeah. Okay, okay, look, come on. Do hey, you, everybody get ready. We about to go. We about you start to looking go. like OGZ. Yeah. You look like OGZ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they, the, um, and, but, uh, okay, another thing about overseas people, what you got to understand is, in America, what you think? America's where you can go from nothing to something. That's yeah. everybody's story. Yeah. You know, I was born in Watts, you know, from nothing. Now I'm traveling around the world. You know, okay. it's always. You hear this, y'all. Where are you from? One more time. I'm from Watts, exactly California. Exactly where? In Watts. Watts huh? off 104th and Central. Damn. Central dog. and Avalon. Greedo yeah. stay a few blocks away from me. I am from Watts, California. Okay. And look at, he's overseas touring, doing festivals, arenas, the biggest shit yeah, you can Yeah, we're going to have to play like some clips or something. Y'all going to have to do some clips. They know so what time it is, bro. Come on. They know what You got this shit on your gram, bro. But look, um, go, so anybody can do this shit, bro. But the thing about overseas is, they don't. You're not gonna be born this way and say I always wanted to be this. If you ask ten people in the room what they want to be, they're gonna say ten different things than what they're doing. Yeah. You go overseas. You ask the waitress, "Why are you so good at being a waitress?" Because this is all I want to do. Yeah. You ask the bellhop, 
damn, this nigga really good at picking up bags and taking them to my room because this is all he ever wanted to do. A farmer, all he wanted to yeah. do was farm. Their position. A driver title. always wanted to drive. That's not how it is out here. Hell no. <laughs> but that, with that being said, though, the people that do their jobs, they take them to the max. <coughs> damn. That should be crazy. They're passionate or they work hard. Or they, don't Bro, want, they don't want to you'll, lose you'll have a You'll have a waiter and you'll be like, like, damn. She'll be like, do you want some milk? I'll be like, yeah, the bitch will bring the milk. And then she'll bring the cookies. Like, how did you know? Uh, yeah. I'm I'm great at my job. How'd you know I wanted cookies? Yeah. You be like, hold on, this is a setup. <laughs> I did it all for the <laughs> nookie. Come on. <laughs> hey, so let's talk about the hoodies, bro. Uh, work. The, they're fucking sick, man. I need one. Where can they order one? Um, can you pull it up on so people? Look, this is the can, thing. This is the thing. They if you in LA, you. I'm still I'm ghetto as fuck. You With feel the me? business, so, bro. So you, if you in LA, you can hit my Instagram DMs. Desto Dub Two Ds Two Bs. And I, I'll, I'll pull up on you, but you can go to my website. It's on my Instagram, Desto Dub. Click the link in bio. I got them there all day. These motherfuckers be selling so quick. I don't even know if you'll be able to get one. Like, they be going so quick. So quick. I'm talking about as soon as I drop some shit, yeah. like four days later, they sold out. And I'll be like, fuck, do I want to put more out? Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, keep it exclusive. Yeah, I I'm love snag being one, exclusive. I'm a, I got I'm you. I got one. you. Next show, you're going to have one on. I'm we're going to do the, we're gonna do the Cali Plug collab. Yeah, no, I'm going to have y'all out the next joint, man. You guys are going to fuck shit up. Damn, bro. Well, shit, man, appreciate you coming on the plug cast, Hey, man, man. I'm going like, a, I'm to a, I'm a be a, a regular in this bitch. Y'all going to see me again. A, next week, he'll be here check it, trying out some flavors and shit. Yeah, let's do it. All right, for sure. Good looking. Right.